if they don't have my car, then I'm good. I'm just going to stop. Mm. Well, they had the car. They had, and everything was in stock. <laughs> <laughs> Bad things. I'm, looking, I'm like, God, dog, look at all this. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, I'm not going to get the third row because we rarely ever use the third row. Right. I'm just going to get the first and the second row. Yeah. So I checked. I got the, they have on one page, they have the first and the second row. I mean, they have you, you can do the front row, first and second, or first, second, and third. Yeah. So I just went, I was like, okay, all I need, all CETA needs is the first and second row. Clicked on that. By the way, you see you needed the first and second row. Are you sure you don't need the third? No, I'm getting out of here just doing the first and second row. So I click no, I don't want the third row. Okay, we'll take you to checkout. I'm on checkout. Bow, don't you need <laughs> the back mat for the cargo area? Hey everybody, this is Garrett and Sita with Idea to Invention. You keep on forgetting the from. I said idea. From, from idea. Oh, from idea to invention. My bad. It's eye to eye. How about that? Did that work? No? No. Because we went from idea, from an idea. To an invention. To an invention. Yes. All right. Y'all got that? <laughs> as long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guess I'll shut up. <laughs> so welcome to our podcast today. So, Missy Otto, yes, we want to talk about 2020 and resolutions. We don't do resolutions. True, but you know, we have goal setting. Goal setting. Okay, we so, set goals. So it's very important mm -hmm. that I get no more tattoos in 2020. It's very important. <laughs> Y'all, I, I got a rebel on my hand. She, she's a closet rebel. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm in the closet about it, though. Mm, yeah, it's getting bolder and bolder day by day. Yeah, you know what? Because uh, the old old people say what they want to say. It comes up, comes out. That's yeah. what I'm, I'm getting to that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's me be like, you know, that baby ain't that cute. <laughs> You embracing your 60 dums well before 60 kids. Way, I know. Right. Um, so we were talking about uh, 2020 goals, <clears throat> excuse me, and how important it is to uh, start, planning early. start planning early. Early, 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 early. Especially from a small business entrepreneur perspective. Mm -hmm. Because once you get into your year, you're literally too late to plan. It's, it's, it's because you're always fluid, right? You're always changing. And, and if you're trying to plan at the same time, it's, it's, it's just, well, go ahead. It, it's nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking, but I don't, I don't say it's ever too late to plan because there have been times where you can't, you're not going to do yourself is okay. Make a plan. Whenever you do plan, you know, whatever you, whatever you do, make a plan, plan and work and work right. the plan. Don't say, don't ever not plan by saying it's too late to plan. Just, okay. just oh, no, go that, ahead and plan. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. The earlier you plan, mm -hmm. the more proactive you are about it. That's, that's the, that's the part that's hard to um, do. I think it's a challenge to do because you, like you said, so much is happening in the now yeah. that you're like, okay, I planned on planning <laughs> and then the planning doesn't happen and the date is already here. And then at the same time, or you planned on planning and the date is already here and then some, then another curveball hits you. So um, we have tried to do, um, and there's also, it's a weird spot too, because when you're starting out in business, you, first of all, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how to plan because you don't have a lot of history to go off of to say, okay, we did this. Yeah. And it didn't work. So let's try something else. And even if you say, OK, I did this last year. It didn't work. Let's go on. 
and do something different. But then you're like, oh, I didn't let, you don't have enough. You almost kind of need to do it two years in a row, see if both years worked or didn't work because, you know, all the variables might not be the same. Because, like, when we first introduced the toolbox, uh, for instance, we first introduced the toolbox, I think, in 2015. Yeah. And it was like crickets, straight okay. crickets mm -hmm. when it came to the holiday season. We were like, you know, we got our own. We're one of the first people to offer a, a, a gift set that's, you know, specifically for curly hair, not a subscription box. I feel the Coke comes back on me. <laughs> <laughs> It's coming. I'm, just, I'm trying not to do it. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> um, but, but, okay. But let me finish. Let okay, me finish. you finish. So we did the toolbox. It was crickets. And then we were like, well, let's try it again. We tried it again. It got a little better. We were like, well, it's worth keeping around. Let's try it again. We tried it again, but then we did a little switch on it. We did a customizable box. Then it was like hotcakes. Mm-hmm. Oh, gotcha. You see, so it's like, it was, it's weird because we're six years in now. So now we have six years of history that we can go by and say, okay, this is enough data to analyze to see this worked versus this didn't work versus, you know, what worked versus what didn't work. But when you're like, I had a hard time when we were like three years in and they were like, what's your average sales? What's this, that, and that? Well, if I only got a year of sales, how do I have average? It's what the year was. I, I know, but you have nothing to compare it to is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, you have month to month, but month to month, even in, re, in e commerce, it ebbs and flows with the calendar. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, your holiday may be off the chain, and then come June, there's nothing. But you, but you, you, you still, I mean, you don't want someone to think just because they're at year one um, that they can't plan. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's hard. It's harder to, it's more difficult to. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't, don't, I don't know if I would say that it's, it's difficult. I, I would say, difficult I would say that if you have, if you're just starting out, you set yourself a goal of what you want to do, right? So if you're selling widget A, mm -hmm. right, and, and your first year of selling widget A is 2020, then you say, you know what? Based on whatever preliminary research you've done for your market, you say, I'm going to, my goal for that year is to sell X amount of widgets. That's your plan. And you work to sell I understand that. that. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, yeah, that's your plan. But within your plan, all of this, you're still testing. So you don't know what's proven and what's oh, not until yeah. after you get years in to be able to say, okay, now, and up, and now I have, you know, mm -hmm. I have proof mm -hmm. that this, this particular, you know, um, initiative worked versus this initiative and how successful was this one versus this one, where mm -hmm. when you're in the very beginning, I felt like, I didn't know where to, yeah, I might have a goal, but I didn't know the steps in between to get to that goal that would work. Oh, yeah. So it's, in other words, if you're in the very beginning stages, don't, don't beat yourself up when you're kind of like, I really don't know how to plan this because I've never done it before and I have nothing to kind of qualify or quantify what the steps to take in order to get to the goal that I want. But that's okay that you don't <clears throat> And know. it's okay, and that's what I'm saying, it's okay to not know. No one knows in the very beginning, but you have to start with, like you said, you have to start with a goal and what you think will work. And then once you go from what you're thinking will work, then you, you get time in and years in, then it's like, okay, yeah, this was proven. I proved this. And then you have some stuff that's like a total fluke. You know, yeah. you did one video and it got 600 million views. Well, but that's the thing though. I mean, there are some things that are out there that you know, even if you're, start, if you're in year zero and you have a goal of selling a thousand widgets from a, a marketing you could you could dedicate a small piece of of of, of capital to facebook ads that's for Google. people who have capital when they start a business i mean i'm just, i mean <laughs> i'm just saying you, you, but you got to think about it that way right right but it, see you're saying that now versus because you know 
what Facebook ads can do for your business. If you're... No, that's why we got this eye to eye, to let them know. Right, you're right. <laughs> that if you're at, at zero, right. you should be thinking about, right. here, here are the social media platforms that I want to advertise on and be realistic about What's, what your bootstrap... I didn't even know you could advertise on digital, on social media. Mm, yeah, you need to educate them peoples. Yeah, how much does that cost? I got 20 bucks right here. It'll buy you something. Not much, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get back into how we are trying to be more purposeful into moving into 2020 and beyond. And actually talking about what we think our goals will be. And what we know we've done yes. already to help us be able to achieve those new goals. Yep. All right. We'll catch y'all on the other half. What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle. Every career. Every smile. Every tear. Each family. Each friend. It builds and makes us who we are. One community. Every boy, every girl. Each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions, and our fears. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that make America. Us. Our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. So it's Sita and Garrett back again with From Eye to Eye, From Idea to Invention, a podcast for inventors and this heavy tailed person that's upstairs that refuses to just pick the chair up and scoot and move it. You now, you know, your mother would be like, if she heard that going across her kitchen floor, what would happen? Get your tail <laughs> up. Get out of that chair and pick it up and move it. Then you hear this pow. <laughs> Hit you with the shoe. Right. But anyway. That's the most abusive African American households. Hush now. <laughs> Hush now. I still flinch when I see a flat water. <laughs> Jenny does too. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Okay. So you were saying. So what we've learned is I think this past year we've been in the second half of the year because we had let's see 2017 we had a really big slump and we had to cut back a lot of stuff we had to trim off any extras that were not producing in terms of people in terms of marketing in terms of everything was it 2016 or 2017 2016. 2016 we had to trim everything down and we went bare bones in order to raise capital mm -hmm. because unfortunately um we have not been one of those businesses who fortunately but unfortunately um unfortunately we haven't been one of those businesses that have had readily available working capital mm -hmm. but i say that I started saying that unfortunately, but fortunately, it has also made us be very um, uh, able to work on lean budgets and still get stuff done. What That's do you call that? Fiscally minded. Fiscally minded. Okay. You mind your money. Yes, we had to. We had no choice, and we had none. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> it wasn't like, you know, we saw them, them, them five pennies was always right here in eyesight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, excuse me, we, um, so from that, we, we know we've had to grow like literally what was come, what was going out was what was coming in. Mm-hmm. What was going out was well, actually helping, he keeping the business afloat. So with that, we had to be very, very um, purposeful in everything that we ha- had to do in order to grow the business. But we also got to the point, it was like, okay, there's only so much you can do mm-hmm. when you don't have a whole lot of working capital with it. So um, we also realized that in order to achieve a goal, yeah, we can say, yeah, I want to be, I want to be a hundred million dollar company. I want to be, I want to do $10 million at the end of this year. But a lot of us say that, but how are you going to do that? How are you going to achieve that? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, I did, you know, I made this many sales this month. Well, where did those sales come from? My store. Well, how do people get to that store? Um, Google. So it was, it's, it's one of those things where, yes, you can have a goal, but you've got to dig down deep and figure out how, where your customers are coming from, what their thought processes are, what their habits are, what they spend, how they spend, how you communicate to them, how they receive the message, what, what message do they receive better than other messages in terms of how you deliver it. There's a whole lot that yeah. goes into that. And if you can drill down to figure out those basics Mm -hmm. and you keep repeating that repeating that as well as expanding your focus then that's how you end up being able to achieve those goals so what I was when I went back to saying about 2016 when we drew when we um, uh, withdrew and kind of kind of stripped stripped down stripped down to everything there were we had started to say okay this works we were we were repeating that it was okay you know, it was a good cadence or whatever, but we weren't growing. We were maintaining, but we weren't growing. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, in the whole scheme of things, the amount of people on this earth that can use our product versus who's actually using our product or versus who's actually finding out about us or found out about us mm-hmm. on social media is like a total, like minuscule drop in the bucket. Right. So it wasn't until really this year that we were like, okay, we can't keep repeating the same things. Yeah. Um, We can't keep repeating the same marketing strategy. We can't just follow the, 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 um, the um, consumer calendar and, Mm -hmm. you know, do a St. Patrick's day sale and Easter sale and 4th of July sale. We had to be able to step it up and, um, If we were going to step it up and then with stepping it up, that meant we were going to have to invest more money. But if we were going to invest more money, then we had to know what is the best return on what vehicle is the best return on that investment. And now we've gotten six years of data behind it, which that, you know, Tommy really helped us. Tommy Traffic. If anybody look him up on uh, LinkedIn, Tommy Traffic. Um, his real name is Tommy Powers and he's not Thomas. He is Tommy, I-E. Yeah, not a Y, I-E. Um, he's the one who really taught us, you know what, it really, you have to drill down and figure out what you're, and I'm like, you know what, when numbers, when people start talking about numbers, that Charlie Brown teacher voice starts coming in my head, <laughs> and then I start, my eyes start to glaze over a little bit, and I'm not one of those, that I have a horrible poker face, horrible. I wear exactly what I'm thinking on my face. Yep. Yeah, I know that. I own that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it because it doesn't. It's not good in every setting, <laughs> but I'm working on it. <laughs> but he he looked at me. He was like, "I can tell you have a totally checked out." I was like, "That's good because I have because I don't understand anything <laughs> what you're talking about." But once he was able to you know break it down even further, then when he gave us those assignments. To, to dig into the data that we have. Cause he was like, you guys have an abundance of data. You just gotta know, I need you to know what it is. Cause I'm like, you know, I can hire somebody mm-hmm. to figure out the data. Garrett's mm-hmm. good with math. You can hire somebody to help Garrett with the data. <laughs> I don't have to know about that. Right? 
Let me block here, block here. <laughs> I don't have to know about the numbers. But then once I got in there and it was like, dang, we do have a lot of numbers. And mm-hmm. these numbers, you know, we could even realize, we could even see that these numbers, because the wrong numbers were grouped together, mm-hmm. how that can totally throw off what your end goal were, is or right. how you get to that end goal or where you think that you're at. Excuse me. But um, so it's really, it's not pertinent. Is pertinent the word? No, it's important. It's not, no, it's more than important. Vital. Ah, yeah, good word. Vital. Yep. That, and it makes life so much easier, like Garrett was saying before, I think he said in the previous podcast, it makes so life so much easier if you know what you need to track from the beginning. And if you have your stuff set up uh, from the beginning, if you have all your numbers yeah. set up from the beginning, especially like even down into Shopify, mm-hmm. like Shopify yesterday or over the weekend. Okay, we've had our Shopify store since 20... 17. Was it 17 or 15? 17. 17. 17. 17. We've had our Shopify, and Shopify does so much. Yeah. That we didn't even realize all the capabilities that it has. So, and then, you know, when you're watching Shark Tank and stuff, you you hear, okay, so what's your what's your profit margin? What's your cost per goods? What's your, I'm like, I just ordered it and paid for it, <laughs> and now I sell it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, it was like, but to be able to put all that information, okay, when you were like, okay, I'm going to start an e-commerce store, put all of that information in, in there first. Yes. Because here I am, we're, the, what, like two years, getting ready to be three years in, mm-hmm. and I'm realizing a lot of our, um, our cost of goods was wrong and on a lot of our uh, products. Either the cost of good was wrong or the, um, the uh, cost of good was missing. Yeah. out of it so it's like okay you don't know what your true margin is you don't know what to what your proof because your, your profit data, margin your data's is not there right because your data is not there but if you started on the front end when you first start yep then you don't have to keep on i mean the audits that you do later because you always have to audit but the audits that you do on your own information will be so much easier and yeah, so much more fluid painful. right yeah. and then when you go to get funding or try to get to that next level or try to get an investor or try to get yep. you can blow look know at my your, numbers you know your numbers right you know your numbers you don't have to be like well my husband will give you a call because <laughs> <laughs> i don't speak numbers but i still do that every now and then because some numbers are too big for me to be trying to wrap my ram- brain around that's fine right so <laughs> but going in any our part of our our main a huge portion of being able to achieve our next goal Mm -hmm. is really knowing and understanding and making sure that all of our data is accurate or as accurate accurate as it can be so you're saying that as folks are getting ready for 2020 they should take the rest of this year at minimum to analyze and do their own audit of their data so that they can understand where they need to go. Mm-hmm. And if you're, if, and if what you're, you're doing, right. Direction, right so. If what you're doing is going to be, allow you to, you know, even have that goal be anywhere a reality. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, we said we had a goal of this amount of money and then, but we had no clue about what our, I mean, yeah, we had no clue how the av- average order value played into this goal. And especially the average order value if we removed Sally Beauty from what the means. equation, what our real average order value is and how, you know, either that's sustainable, if, if that number is um, a number that will let you be able to sustain being able to do marketing dollars or mm-hmm. do you got to increase that? Cause the only way you're going to get more money, only way you're going to get to a certain goal monetarily is either you're going to increase, which I'm, I'm speaking Tommy language. You're either going <laughs> to increase and Tommy and Emmanuel language. Um, you're going to increase the co- the amount that people spend on your website 
at one given time. Mm -hmm. Two, you increase how many times they come back to your website to buy something else. Yep. Or three, you get more people to come to your website and buy. So how are you going to do? How are you gonna what's your, what's your what, what, what? Which one of those are you going to attack the, attack the most? So, but the only way you're going to attack first yep. and the only way you're going to figure that out is by the numbers. Does 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 your traffic show? You and know how many return how many return buyers you got? And Shopify lets you figure all of that. How many people are coming back to your website? How many times do they come back? When they come back, how much money do they spend? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you got all these customers coming back and they're only spending this amount every time, then maybe you need to either educate them on what they also need to buy with that one product, yep. or you need to get them to tell their friend to come. Yes, you know stuff like that. So. Which, which, which goes into our planning, our other planning for 2020 and the um, um, doing the uh, oh, cluster market. The cluster market. I was mm -hmm. going to call it grouping. It is um, grouping, bundling, all that. Which, which is, is, is planning on how we begin to speak to our customer base mm -hmm. um, and, and, and guide them. To what they need mm -hmm. based on their lifestyle mm -hmm. and um, I think that that I think that's going to be a really I think that's gonna be a monumental change because mm -hmm. when people begin to say oh, oh I mean because I, 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 I mean I'll give you a friend as soon as we come back I'll give you a super for example and I was like All dang right. it I'm just did exactly what I need my customer to do so when All we right. come back we I'll, I'll tell you about what I bought <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back with Sita and Garrett from Idea to Invention. Hey guys, this is Garrett and Sita with From Idea to Invention, Eye to Eye, a podcast for inventors, entrepreneurs, small businesses, small businesses. Mm -hmm. and we're having a conversation today in regards to uh, now they're vacuuming, planning, <laughs> planning, um, setting your goals for 2020, and um, our approach and thought process of moving forward. Mm -hmm. Start some melon. Either pine salt or green apple <laughs> fabuloso in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Okay, so Miss Sita. Okay, so you're gonna tell us about the story of how you just had an experience of buying something that ties to our strategy that we're gonna do right so in 2020. Right. So this is just gonna give you a little 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 little, little nugget. Mm -hmm. We'll charge you for it. Um <laughs> We're, what we're doing is we're building a story around all of our products. So it's very simple to connect, okay, if our biggest seller is product A, but you know, usually when you use product A, the typical person also uses this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. So, but they only came to the website for product A because that's the only thing they've been told about. Yes. So now we're like, no, okay. We already know you're going to use product A, and we already know that you probably have product A. So now we're going to show you, not with, excuse me, when you have product A, you need to do, you need to also, we've got this for you, and we've got this for you, and we've got mm -hmm. this for you, and th that's complementary to product A. So that way you have everything you need whenever you go to use product A in a specific way. Yep. So that's what we're going to do. So that's where I, um, I um, had this little epiphany moment when yeah. I was, online shopping at three o'clock in the morning which i usually do because i can't sleep um and in between snores hey 
I like to contribute what I can. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I was, okay, so w- I just got a new car. Mm-hmm. The Kia Telluride. So awesome. <laughs> okay. Keep on. The car is so awesome. <laughs> so anyway, in all, in all honesty, I fell in love with that car because of the 2019 Super Bowl commercial. Okay. That so they got me at the commercial. before the car even came out. Right. We're not famous. There are no stars in the sidewalk for us. No statues in our honor. We're just a small Georgia town of complete unknowns. The closest thing to a world stage is 81 miles away in Atlanta tonight. Our movie stardom, our football careers, they never took off. Because we are not known for who we are. We hope to be known for what we do. What we build. This thing we've assembled. It has a chance to be remembered. No, we are not famous. But we are incredible. And we make incredible things. And I think it was another commercial. What? Yes. It happened in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I forgot what happened, but I was like half in between sleep and the, and the, but it was, I heard it in the background Mm -hmm. and I'm like, what is that? (laughs) And it was was a Telluride (laughs) commercial. So it was like, okay. um, uh, I knew, I knew I was going to have to get a new car because the, um, the boys, we have two 16 year old boys um, that are going to start driving. I was not going to share a car with them, not sharing a vehicle. No. And so they're going to get mom's um, CX-9 and they can share it and have a good time until they, they kill it. But we were not sharing a vehicle. Mm-hmm. So I knew we were in the market for them, but I always I wanted to get something that would fit the whole family. So my baby child who is adopted, yep. he like you don't know him you know who he is right? <laughs> um I think I do. he's going to be a big boy his birth father six three two something yep, yep. so the cx9 was going was not going to be cutting it probably past fifth grade <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was like okay we need an eight passenger vehicle plus i'm the type of girl who if i see a piece of furniture on the side of the road yeah. it is free and it looks good, I'm pulling over <laughs> to get it. I won't cross traffic. <laughs> I won't, but I will pull over. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So anyway, so we got the got my Kia Telluride, and mm-hmm. I love it. And then the WeatherTech commercials came on. Now, we used to live in Bolingbrook, Illinois, so we saw WeatherTech from its birth. Yep. So I felt some kind of way about it. It's like, <laughs> remind me of home. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I go to the WeatherTech website? And I was like, probably, you know, in the 2020, they don't have it yet. The seat, the mats and stuff, because it's a 2020. Mm-hmm. They had it. Le- laser measured for your Telluride. So did you already buy it? Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. That Listen, you'd be buying all your gifts. Are- <laughs> Merry Christmas. Chick. Thank you, babe. It comes out <laughs> of the same account, so it'd be all right. right. Like, <laughs> you're looking at me all cross-eyed like, how come you didn't get me no gift? <laughs> well, you done bought all your <laughs> gifts all year. I do say it's my Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah, Christmas, they anniversary, can be Christmas for birthday. Gar- right from <laughs> you go to the pawn shop. This will be for my... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? That's why God puts you with the right person. 
because we have very different thought processes about spending. Ha- we just we're different. We're, I don't yin know. Yin and yang. That's how I, we survive. So. Well, yeah, that is how balance. we survive. Because if if it wasn't a yang up in this yin, <laughs> <laughs> if it was too many yings. <laughs> <laughs> But that's for the next episode. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so went on to tell you, I mean, went yep. on WeatherTech. Yep. And I was like, okay, I'll just get, <laughs> first of all, I was like, if they don't have my car, then I'm good. I'm just going to stop. Mm. Well, they had the car. They had, and everything was in stock. <laughs> <laughs> Bad things, I'm, I'm like, God, dog, look at all this. <laughs> so then... I was like, okay, I'm not going to get the third row because we rarely ever use the third row. I'm just going to get the first and the second row. So I checked that I got the, they have on one page, they have the first and the second row. I mean, they have you, you can do the front row, first and second, or first, second, and third. So I just went, I was like, okay, all I need, all CETA needs is the first and second row. Clicked on that. By the way, we see you needed the first and second row. Are you sure you don't need the third? No. I'm getting out of here just doing the first and second row. So I click, no, I don't want the third row. Okay, we'll take you to checkout. I'm on checkout. Bow, don't you need (laughs) the back mat for the cargo area? Yeah, I do. So I'm like, okay, I'll get the back mat for the cargo area. They upsell the mess out of you. Oh, by the way, don't you need the cup holder thing for your phone? Mm Yeah, I think I need that. <laughs> so the whole thing is about that. They had the upsell, and they almost timed it to the whole thought process mm-hmm. trigger. I mean, literally, it was like, well, I remember seeing that cup holder on T. We got you, girl. We got you. Here it is. And you can bundle it all together, and we'll give you such and such amount off if you just bundle all this together. Bing. Hit the bundle. It's mine. So, I mean, it's that figuring that part out. It's yeah. like, yeah. okay. But the only way they did that is they had to analyze how their customers, how their customers their think. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Wow. Ain't that, that's, that's brand new. So, hey, it ain't broke. Don't need to remake the wheel. Mm-hmm. It's time for us to, you know, do the same thing. Yeah. So. And like we said, we we know I I totally own the fact that we pe- most people do not know we have all the stuff that we have available on our website because we haven't done a good job at letting everyone know. Right. We have all of this to offer. Puff Cuff wants to be the one stop shop for you for everyone with curly textured hair. Yeah. Um. What is it? Every. What is it? I was getting ready to say the tagline. I forgot. You'll have to go to the website and see it when we're ready. Oh, so that yeah. every, I mean, a curly something for every situation, every, you know, a combination for every textured hair situation. Ah, okay. Yes, a combination. Right, that's nice. Yeah, kind of borrowed that from Honest. <laughs> 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 but, um, so it makes total sense. Even with, like, this morning, I was in, um, doing it wasn't a before church tutorial that i do but i did a tutorial this morning i got out of the shower had my t-shirt turban my tangle master brush a couple of puff cuffs you know my wrapper right so that situation you had everything right i'm like so why don't i just bundle this and everything i didn't got everything out the warehouse so yeah yeah it makes sense yeah wow huh okay so that's what we'll be. And so that's part of our 2020 process and that, new processes for 2020. And, and that type of planning um, and having that, that goal of, of creating, creating that uh, type of uh, buying experience. Once you put it out, the, once you put the plan out and you started executing it, right, it allows you when there is a change that comes to be nimble Mm -hmm. right because if if you're just flying by the seat of your pants Mm -hmm. and you have a change that you need that could be very valuable and beneficial to you and bring you more revenue but you can't change because you're too busy fighting this fire Mm -hmm. without a plan Mm -hmm. and so that's why it's it's important to sit down and 
and do your due diligence and know your right. know your numbers, know what works, know what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Check your ego and pers- and and personal feelings to the side mm-hmm. and work based on what your numbers tell you. Because right. your numbers right. will tell you what works for your business. Right, and it tells you what you can afford and what you can't afford. Yeah. So, and that leads to like we have our we plan we plan 2020, which we still I want to do that better. We plan the year out. We plan 2020 and 2019. Yeah. I want to start being able to plan um, at the beginning of 2020. I want to start being able to plan 2021. Yeah. No, Instead I, I of being able to wait, you know, until after the summer. It's like, oh, shoot. Because because mm-hmm. really, in essence, because if we already have 2020 planned, we would know what's going to feed 2021. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yep. that's a good idea. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Well, we'll we're gonna take a break and come back and and finish up this conversation about planning into 2020 and how you're gonna set your goals to move forward and be the best business you can be. See you on the other side. What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle, every career, every smile, every tear. Each family, each friend. It builds and makes us who we are. One community. Every boy, every girl. Each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions and our fears. These are the things that keep us These are the things that make America. Us. Our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. So we are back with From Idea to an Invention, a podcast for inventors and small businesses. And this is my lovely husband, man, Garrett, and I am Sita. And we are in the last segment of just talking about our goals, goal setting for the business for 2020. And just kind of, you know, thoughts around how to do a better job probably than we've done in the past. And just being more purposeful in the, in the goals and the, uh, the um, means to achieve those goals for the upcoming year. So Garrett, as you know, had years of experience in corporate America. You want me to tell you? Tell him? He had, okay, it was 37 years of experience. 37 years, girl. (laughs) Straight out of high school. Um, (laughs) 20 some years of corporate America in pretty much the IT and finance sector. Did Mm -hmm. I say that right? Yep. So how do you, do you see, uh, do small businesses, do you, do you see them mirroring kind of like on a, a, um, a elementary level, the planning that big corporations do, or is it a totally different ball game? Um, I mean, no, they can, they can mirror what corporations do. The one thing that small businesses should do, um, is mirror the discipline. Mm. Um, that's associated with a corporation, right? So, I mean, as you grow, as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, the, the need to be very disciplined and structured and timely of when you do your planning is mm-hmm. critical. So, no tequila Tuesdays. No, no, well, no what? Tequila Tuesdays. Oh no. Well, I mean, you can have tequila Tuesdays, but not around planning time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 And so if, if you, and that's, that's kind of the beauty of being able to come out of corporate America and go into a small business environment is that 
you, if you've been blessed to be able to do have that discipline, you mm-hmm. can bring that discipline in. Mm-hmm. But when you bring that discipline in, you have to understand that um, you you can't do it the same way. Mm-hmm. You can have the discipline, but you can't do the execution the same way because it's just smaller. And so you, you need to be able to um, execute it to where you leave enough room for the natural um, need to be flexible within a small business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, in a big business, yeah, you need, to, you need to have some flexibility, but because it's so big, it's like turning a big ship, right? You, now you it takes time. It just takes time for that, for that quick um, response. But in a small business, I mean, we've seen it. it you got a day. Mm-hmm. You got a week to turn mm-hmm. it around. <laughs> no, um, you need to have this by five o'clock today. Okay, right. let's get on the phone and call whoever we, we know to, to figure out how we gonna get this. <laughs> but but the beauty though is is that if you already have the discipline and you already have your your plan as best as you can have it laid out and you're marching and your folks are marching towards that, whenever that change comes into play, mm-hmm. y- you can be flexible mm-hmm. w- without knowing that it's gonna, you know, sh- close the shop for the day because right. you gotta change something. No, right. Um, but uh. I, that that's really one of the main differences between big business and and, and a small business, because mm-hmm. you're more in, you're in the trenches. I can imagine instead of being high level looking down, you're high level, but you're in at the same time. Well, yeah, no, that that's that's a good point. That's <coughs> another piece of um, when you're <laughs> when you're planning in in a large corporation. Yeah, you're typically planning for a few other layers down, depending on where you're at, to be the doers. Mm-hmm. When you're in a small business, everybody's a doer. you're planning <laughs> and you're doing. Right. Right. So um, it does give you a, it, it puts you in a different mindset mm-hmm. when you're planning because you're like, okay, I'm going to have to do this. Mm-hmm. Even though I know I need to plan, but you, and so you, ca- you begin to understand what your weaknesses are, what you can do, what you can't do. Mm-hmm. It's very clear, right? It's very clear. Because you're not waiting on anybody else. At all. In the end, you're not waiting for, okay, uh, we're having this meeting. Right. And I'm handing off this task. Mm-hmm. And I got to wait for them to have their meeting about that task. Yeah. And da-da-da-da-da. Mm-hmm. When it's like, mm. And there's, like, there's no safety net. Right. Right. It, usually, you know, in, big, in larger companies, other layers below you kind of can it almost feels like a safety net because Mm -hmm. you're like okay i planned it i strategized it you execute Mm -hmm. you're my safety net right to make Mm -hmm. sure that it gets done in small business you are the safety net and you are the execution so Mm -hmm. that that's the difference um between the two Mm. what else thank you no and that 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 really has helped because because it's beyond just three employees now because mm-hmm. um, you in, instituted the uh, bi- bi- bi-weekly catch-ups yep. um, which and that, that's one thing I would I would have I would tell every small business to to implement I had a uh, uh, a leader when I was working at Allstate and she she had underneath her probably 10 10 to 12, it fluctuated, 10 to 12 leaders underneath her, mm-hmm. senior managers and directors underneath her. And um, every Friday, 15 minutes, we all would gather in our office and everybody would say one thing about what's hot. Mm-hmm. So then that way her whole leadership team understood what was pressing, she understood, and she can direct at that point in time, yeah, I know you're working on this, but you need to go help Joe do mm-hmm. X because that's mm-hmm. more important. And so... That's the reason why I wanted to implement it for us, because as we grow, we don't want to get to a point where we're just working in pockets and only the people in the pocket knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. And the the more we're able to share the wealth of knowledge and the happenings across our organization, people begin to feel more vested. Mm -hmm. Right. And they just don't sit there in, in their little silo and only understand what they do. They now understand, marketing understands what supply chain is doing, mm-hmm. supply, you know, vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, and we haven't gotten to the 15 minute part yet. <laughs> but I don't know how y'all did that with 12 people in 15 minutes. Everybody got 45 seconds? Mm, everybody. Well, so, so you think about it, if you got 10 people, That's what I'm saying. 10, 10 to 12 people, everybody got a minute. You could really only bring in one item. But you couldn't say nothing about it. You can say. I mean, you couldn't like ask anybody else about their item. 
That yeah. doesn't really matter. I just well, trying yeah. to figure out how y'all did it in 15 I mean, minutes. You, you say, say what the issue is. Uh-huh. This is what I'm working on. If it's a problem, if it's not. Mm-hmm. And who you need to help. And then I couldn't have been in you kind of mm-hmm. you kind of move on and, and but but it was it was successful mm-hmm. because it allowed us we always knew who was working on what what, what was priority mm-hmm. right and she as the leader guided where the priority was so mm-hmm. that everybody knew how to focus mm-hmm. um, so yes some key things mm-hmm. to recap to recap talking about know your data know your data that's number one know mm-hmm. your data. Know your data. Mm-hmm. Number two. Know your data. <laughs> <laughs> know your data. <laughs> so yeah. Um, know know your data. Um, and I would say be intentional mm-hmm. um, about where you're going. Um, your direction and and, and is is never too small. Mm-hmm. But you just need to have a direction and be intentional about where the, where you're going and work that plan mm-hmm. um, so that, as I said before, so that when the hiccups come, with, and they will come, you can weather that storm mm-hmm. and still continue to go on what, what your normal path has been for that year. Because mm-hmm. um, to me, that's just... So know your data and plan. Know your data and plan. And work your plan. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to plan, but you got to work your plan. Mm -hmm. And be disciplined to work your plan. Disciplined but flexible. See, that's a good Mm t-shirt. Disciplined but flexible. You come up with some good ideas. Mm -hmm. Yep, because I'm one fly chick. (laughs) (laughs) Got a t-shirt. I'm one fly chick. (laughs) Disciplined (laughs) and flexible. (laughs) But so, yeah, so ho- hopefully, you know, we, we've shared some some good information about how you should approach going into 2020. Um, we have a lot of stuff on our plate. I'm looking for to have an awesome, fabulous year, God willing, and, and, uh, and know that he will provide everything that we need to, to move forward. Yes, ma'am. And so, as we always say in closing, take care, be blessed, and be a blessing. See ya. Peace.